Odilia a hand of phase 10. Maybe we'll even give you a piece of pie. I don't know about you, but these days we're playing a lot of cards. We're eating a lot of pie. We're eating a lot of desserts. We're making a lot of food and we're eating it. But I don't know if your table looks like this with uh, seven people or if it looks like one person or 10 people at your house, less than 10, or if there's five or six, but I hope that you're able to pull up a chair and have a good conversation with your friends and your family that maybe you're social distancing with or maybe you live with them. That's what we're gonna do here tonight. We're gonna have a good conversation with each other and I believe we're gonna commune with God as we do so. I wanna give a couple shout outs real quick. One shout out was to Grace Troyer, who made these amazing pies. This is a peanut butter pie. Let's give it up for Grace. Yes, thank you, Grace. Great baker, great cook, great baker. This is a peanut butter pie, my personal favorite, and a caramel apple pie, and the topping is unbelievable. The next shout out goes to myself. <laughs> These are my peanut butter pies. I'm gonna give you a great tip, something for you to do this week. This is a three ingredient peanut butter cookie. You won't believe it, but it's so good. So here's the deal. One recipe, it makes maybe eight to 12 cookies, depending on how big you put them in the pan. But it's one egg, one cup of sugar, and one cup of peanut butter. I've never used the crunchy peanut butter because Dallas doesn't like crunchy peanut butter. <laughs> we use creamy. So one cup of peanut butter, one egg, and one cup of sugar. They are so good, right? Are they so good? Yeah. Sam Steyer's on our staff. It's one of her favorite things to make. It's one of her favorite desserts. Shout out to Sam. She makes them all the time. And she was with me at my house in Indiana when I discovered the recipe. And we made them, and they were so good, and I'm still making them. So try that this week. I bake them for about 350 at 350 for about eight minutes, and I keep watching them. We like them gooey in the middle. We like them a little harder, a little longer. I do not slacken them. I let them just sit as a ball and kind of spread out as they cook. So something kind of fun for you tonight. Something to say, hey, come on in. Come on in to my table. Sit with me. Eat with me. Sit with us. Eat with us. And let's experience God together. We hope that you'll do that tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard not connecting with each other. It's hard not, you know, being together. I mean, we, got, we chose to protect ourselves so that we could be together like this on Sunday nights. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people get this privilege. But it's hard when we don't get to be with you. Just today, our family was talking about how we miss your faces. We miss seeing you. Yes. And we miss the connection. So I thought it'd be fun if I just had a few little fun things that we all kind of do that would connect us a little bit. We can say, yeah, that's me, I do that, or that's funny when that happens, or I love it when that happens. And so I just have a couple of things off the internet that I found that might connect us a little bit that I thought would be fun and maybe make us laugh or make us remember when we used to drive, you know, <laughs> or go shopping. So how about this? When you're driving and the light turns green before you have to come to a stop, that's a good moment. That's a good day, especially on Tamiami Trail here in Sarasota because it's constant stopping otherwise. How about when you're receiving a package with a bunch of bubble wrap that you can pop? Come on. Reba, I know you love that. How about checking things off your to-do list? All those doers, raise your hand. Yeah, give God some praise when you're checking it off. Some of you are using this time to plant flowers or do some fix-its around the house. If you're checking off your to-do list, it's making you very happy right now. How about this? When you find a dollar or maybe even $10 you forgot about in a pants pocket. Yes. That is, of course, if you're putting on pants and not just wearing your pajama pants, okay? If you're putting on real pants or real shorts. You might find a dollar or $10. That's a good day, right? It's a good day for putting on real pants. I had to put on real pants today, and I was like, wow, okay. I'm enjoying my shorts around the house. How about this? When you draw something, and it's actually really good. Okay. I cannot hardly draw a stick person, 
But there are people in our church, like Harper, Harper Deans, who is an incredible artist, and others. But I'm not a good drummer. And so when I draw something in it, and you can actually tell what it is, I am so happy. <laughs> right? Okay, so I have a story about Eric. You guys will remember this in youth group, way back. One night, Eric was preaching on something, and he had an easel up there and a marker. And he drew a circle. And I forget exactly you were talking about a bullseye, I believe. And you were going to create a bullseye. And your outer circle was the perfect circle. And the entire room of students was like, what? And the whole sermon stopped because the circle was so perfect that we were, he wasn't just happy about his circle. We were all happy about his circles because it was so perfect. I mean, some of you are just great drawers. Some of us are not, okay? How about this? Getting to the cash register and finding out the item you're about to buy is actually on sale. Come on now. Come on now. All the men just made a collective amen because their wives are buying one. Remember when we used to go to the stores and shop? I have a Target gift card just waiting and I refuse to buy online. Okay, I'm just saying. I want to go there. I want to see the experience. I'm going to look at every aisle. Okay? How about this? When a song you haven't heard in ages comes on and you remember every word. Okay, so what's one of your favorite songs from high school? What's one of your favorite songs from high school or junior high? And when it comes on, you can remember where you were, who you were with. You can almost feel the moment. Put it in the comments below. One of your favorite songs from junior high or high school that as soon as it comes on, it's like you're right back there. For me, it would be right back in the 80s or the 90s. I can, a lot of times I had a season in New York, I can see you driving down the Long Island Expressway or maybe I'm in high school here in Sarasota, driving up the ridge to our first house that we lived in on Hayden Boulevard. I mean, it takes you back, music does, doesn't it? It totally takes you back. Yeah. All right, and this last one. Come on, this happened to me just a week and a half ago. It made me so happy eating ice cream right out of the carton. Come on, come on, right? Listen, quarantine does things to you. It brings us to peanut butter pie and ice cream out of the carton. Well, I hope some of those things connected with some of the things that bring you a little bit of laughter, a little bit of joy, or a trip down memory lane. But what you know is awesome is we get to connect like this. Yes, it's not the same as person to person, and that's hard. And some of us are getting a little weary and maybe a little lonely because we miss being together. We miss the connection. And we just want to give a collective amen to that. We miss you. We miss the connection. Someone drove by or rode by on their bicycle earlier. And I was like, is that Julia Odell? <laughs> Julia's the lady that goes to our church. And I got so excited just to see her through a window. Hi, Julia. We miss you guys. We miss the connection. But as I was thinking about that tonight and how we wanted to connect kind of in a different way tonight, I was thinking what I love about a relationship with Jesus and about being one of his disciples is that we're always connected. You know, we don't have to be one of the ones that he chose off the boat more than, you know, thousands of years ago, and he didn't, we won't have to be there in that moment. Right now, we connect with him in the here and the now. We are always connected in relationship with Jesus. Yes, I would have loved to have been one of his disciples walking and journeying along with him on those days, but I'm so thankful to be a disciple today, to be on journey with him right now in this season, this season of such uncertainty. There's one thing we know for sure that we're always going to be connected with Jesus. Amen. You can't quarantine away from Jesus. No. And I'm so thankful for that. And it's the joy of him, the joy of the connection with him, that really is a strength in this time. Mm -hmm. Knowing that, okay, I don't know about this, and I'm weary in this, and sometimes I feel lonely with this, but Jesus is with me, and that gives me a lot of strength in my days. It gives me a lot of strength in my moments. And so I don't know if you've been tuning in, but most every sermon, I have a childhood song. Have you seen them? Have you heard them? What's been one of your favorites? Comment one of your favorite childhood songs that we've addressed over the last couple of weeks. Well, here's another one. 
The joy of the Lord is my strength. So we thought we would start tonight, since we're not going to have a sermon per se, with a childhood song. And it's so easy. We'll sing it two times so that you can sing it with us the second time. Because literally, it says the joy of the Lord is my strength like 20 times. Okay? <laughs> so let's sing it together. You ready? The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Sing it with us. The joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 I know that that song, if you know that song, and if you sing it with us, it will be in your head till Wednesday. That's a good thing. And we pray that the joy of the Lord will be your strength this coming week. Before we kind of jump into our conversation, like I talked about, which I'm so excited to do, and I haven't heard your answers. I only know who's speaking first and next and so on. I don't know what you're going to say, but I'm so excited about this conversation. Um, we've planned the questions. They've prepared their answers. They've thought and prayed over their answers. But I'm so excited. Before we do that, we want to pray. We want to pray over this time. We want to pray over you over your circumstances, over has over the situation as things start to open up, that we'll all have wisdom and that God will protect us and that we can experience life and connection, first of all, that honors each other, but more than anything, that honors God. Okay, so Eric, will you pray for us? Just want to invite, invite you to pray along with us as we pray because, you know, we want to be in this prayer time together as we have this conversation together too. Let's pray. Father, we just want to surrender this night totally to you. We give it to you in Jesus' name. And Lord, we we just know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. But right now, I just I also know that there's probably a lot of times where finding that joy might seem like it's a little bit more difficult. But the truth is, if the joy of the Lord is our strength, then you're always with us and we can have joy no matter what the circumstances. And so, Lord, I want to pray that tonight would bring some joy to uh, all of us. And God, uh, tonight as we have conversation and talk about some of these things, that it would be so valuable and beneficial. But most of all, Lord, that your will would be done in this conversation yes. Yes. and that you would receive all the glory in it. Mm -hmm. Lord, we lift up every single individual that or family that is watching um, tonight or later. God, that uh, they would experience your love, your joy, your peace, your strength. Mm -hmm. And Lord, as uh, we all think about what we're going through today, what we've been through and what we're looking forward to, oh God, that you would help us to know that you're already there and uh, we're going with you uh, tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 We love you, church, and we're so excited to spend this next few minutes with you. So as we ask these questions and as we kind of work through some of these things that we're learning and growing in, um, maybe you can write these questions down for yourself. And you can have this conversation with your family later this week. Or maybe you can have this conversation on with your small group if you host a Zoom small group. Or, or maybe you're going to have, you know, um, breakfast in the morning with friends, social distancing in a parking lot somewhere. We've heard of those things happening. It's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe these are some questions you can ask them and you guys can grow and learn and journey together. So the first question is... What are you learning? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think about how we journey through this learning things, there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are being inundated with information. I mean, we, if I, for lack of a better term, we're getting fat on information. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, nowhere to exercise it because we've been quarantined. But we've got so much information that, you know, I don't know if it will ever benefit us necessarily, but I know that it will help us as we move forward. But we've got all this information and we're learning so much medically. And that's cool. It's important. It will help us. But besides kind of those things, in your personal, spiritual journeys, what are you learning? I look at Psalm 25, 5, and the psalmist says this. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are my God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. 
I believe that as we put our hope in God and as we recognize that he's our God, he's our Savior, that is really the place where we can learn a lot. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes when we're not open to learning because we're just so terrified or we're just so like, I don't even know what's going on, and so we just keep ourselves busy, when we kind of do this, we um, lower the percentage of ability to learn. Okay, so I think that when we're open and we're like, you are my God and my hope is in you, and we're open to growing and we're open to who he is and what he's calling us to do, and we're saying, teach me, Lord, that we open ourselves to learning. So the first question I pose tonight is, what are you learning? And we would love it if you would even jot down something small in the comment section below. Feel free to engage with us tonight. But we're going to start with Tina. We have a few of you uh, that are going to share, but what are you learning? I'm definitely learning a lot in this season, and um, I resonate so much what you just said about how um, we can, I can be so good at keeping myself busy, and when I do that, I, I am not clear-minded, I am busy, I'm just scatterbrained, and so in this season, the Lord is really causing me to pause and reset my mind. And so reset was the word that the Lord really spoke to me at the beginning of this year. And I didn't know what that meant, what that looked like, but God is really revealing even just in this season, um, a part of that meaning of that word reset is that he wants to reset my mind. And so when I actually stop and not just make a to-do list of things that I could do to be productive for the day, but instead when I stop and allow God to really meet me, and I open up, put those walls down so he can teach me and, and speak to my heart and to my mind, it changes everything and gives me a lot of peace, a lot more peace than what I would have had if I had kept busy. So that's something I'm learning, how to reset my mind, and I'm learning I cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. And so one way I'm connecting with the Lord is like getting outside and just walking or riding my bike um, outside in nature, and that's one way I'm realizing that I can rest and reset is out in his creation. So that's one thing I'm learning. I've learned a lot since I've been working with this uh, staff and we've been working together for two years now. And when we first started working together, we, we have the, the devotions that are led by Marcia and Eric and they do a really great job and we take a lot of prayer requests. And then there's a prayer time and the prayer time is each of us uh, go around and we, we all pray. To begin with, our words came out a little bit clumsy. Uh, we were a little bit shy about our prayers. I guess we didn't know each other very well, but the growth in prayer and the growth of prayer in our staff and in our group is just uh, wonderful. I know all of you would love to be in our staff meetings and get in on our prayer meetings. <laughs> and the devotions too, they are excellent as well. But the prayer meetings are really wonderful. Uh, I, I have learned this, you cannot become a great person of prayer until you do it. You've gotta spend some time praying and praying out loud to your loved ones and friends and maybe having them to join you. But I've learned that and I'm thank I thank God for it. Yeah. That's good. We do have some good conversations and some great prayer times and for our church and our families and for each other. It's been a fun journey. Even during this uh, time of quarantine and especially surrounding Paige, we made her a big batch of mashed potatoes one night. Don't you worry because she's really been through it. One of the things I'm learning is an even deeper lesson that we really don't know what's going to happen. We really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I've known, like, we make plans and we hope for things and we don't know. We hear that all the time. You don't know if tomorrow's going to come and we kind of know that. And we recognize that tragedies happen and when you've been on earth longer, you learn that even more. But I don't know, this last few months, or this last month especially, but I would even say a couple months ago, when we got the flu on vacation, we had such a great plan for vacation, and then we got so sick. Maybe it was the flu. Maybe it was COVID-19. Who knows? But I can tell you this, it was bad. And we didn't expect it. 
It was unexpected. Mm -hmm. And now here we are in this season, unexpected season. Mm -hmm. And every day the news that comes out is just not, you don't know what's gonna, what they're going to say tomorrow. And we can predict what we think and we can predict what we hope, but we really don't know. Mm -hmm. We really don't know what's going to happen. Daniel was talking last night with my brother who was in visiting my parents and we were talking and Daniel was saying how one of the first days of the quarantine, when it really started back in March, just before he started traveling to come back home, he was headed to his internship. And earlier in that day, it was like mid-March, and he posed the question on Facebook, it, are we overreacting or are we spot on, basically? And he posed that at like two in the afternoon, and by nine that night, the entire world had shifted because if you remember an NBA player got became positive with COVID-19 and they stopped the game from even beginning because he was positive he tested positive for the coronavirus and then with pretty quick a couple hours later another team member did too and then within days the March Madness was shut down and high school tournaments were shut down and then you just watched the entire world just kind of shut down and we were watching it already happen in other places, but it really began to happen here. Yeah. Did you ever think, even if you don't care about basketball, did you ever think that March Madness wouldn't happen? What about the Masters? I mean, the golf tournament. It's such a tradition for you, such a tradition. So I am learning that we really don't know. We really don't. And we've got to really learn to lean on the one who knows. Yes. We're reminded all through scripture that God has a plan for us and that Jesus knows us and he knows us by name. You know, he calls Mary by her name in the garden after he's resurrected. And, and so we've got to really learn to lean on the one who knows. And so let's sing this song, learning to lean, learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. I, you probably know this hymn from days gone by. Sing it with us, pick out a part, and join us a cappella right here, right now. Learning to lead, Goldstein, Mama Jesus is still open. And it's perfect. Every time. But we've gained weight. That is not what I'm asking. <laughs> that is not what I'm asking. What have you gained? You know, when we put into practice the things that we're learning, we grow spiritual muscles. We grow personal muscles. And we gain strength. When we learn to lean on Jesus, it says, finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. And as we put into practice the things we're learning, we gain. So what are you gaining? Listen to this from Philippians 4, 9. Whatever you have learned or received, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So let's talk about it. What have you gained, which is different than what have you learned? So let's start with my mom. Mom, what have you gained? I think my, my answer might be surprising because what I've gained is an experience that says to me that past experience is not enough. That if we're not growing into what God needs us to be for the calling of this day, then how good is maybe what I've known in a lifetime of ministry is not as effective. 
which means following God in obedience means allowing him also to shape us into the useful vessel for this present day task. Yes. And believe me, at this age, that's new experience. I'm gaining experience. Mm -hmm. So the need to be remolded, molded, remolded for kingdom good, for kingdom purpose, mm -hmm. has no age limit. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to reach it. I'm never going to reach it. And I believe the verse out of Matthew 633 pretty much says it completely. And it is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto me. Yes. Amen. That's so good. Um, just a side thing. That verse was part of my devotions today. So it's cool that. that God's doing that. Um, something that I've gained and am gaining every day is just a new understanding of how God is working in my everyday. Um because of, I had to turn off my news app on my phone because it was dinging with updates constantly. And, um, and so I get my information from other people right now. Um, but I needed to do that because I was constantly being bogged down by the negativity and the hurt and the hardship of our world, but also my family. Uh, I'm all, yeah. um, and so... Um, and so I was constantly being bogged down by that, and it was bringing this really hard understanding of the world and my life. And so really I've gained this new understanding with the Lord of how he's being faithful every day and how he's working in every day and he's providing. And, um, and even just like, um, oh, I could be upset that I'm stuck in the house again, or it could be, oh, no, I have these great opportunities to connect with my friends in new and cool ways. And so... I'm very thankful God is faithful every day, mm -hmm. and I'm thankful for that, that gaining of understanding. Amen. I've certainly gained um, new perspectives. Um, I know you said it, but I've gained a few pounds as well, and uh, everything like that, and that changes my perspective, how far I can jog and things, but in all seriousness... Um, it wasn't very. It's not very hard for me to find uh, what I've gained in this in this season, even though it's been a very difficult season for everyone in different ways. But the truth is, I we have gained um, time with our boys, Daniel and Dallas, who were both were in college. As much as they wanted to be back at college, and we wanted them to be back at college, and, and all of that, um, I chose to look at it in this season. This is time that I would never have had. Um, with them, uh, the four of us together, and uh, the conversations that we've been able to have, the games we've been able to play, movies we've been able to watch, just time together is definitely something that I gained. I consider that uh, a great gift, and um, I'm very thankful for that because, you know, as your kids, as you know, many of you get into adult life and then college life and then adult life, things really, really do change. And uh, so I'm real thankful for the time we've had together as a family. And, um, also in this season, I already knew a lot of this, but I've gained an even deeper appreciation and understanding of the character and heart of my wife. Um, the way that, that she chooses, even when things are very difficult, to really try to seek God and be obedient to Him and, um, and choose to be as positive as, as possible as a person, as a wife, as a mother, and as a pastor and leader is really inspiring. And... Um, the Lord's been able to give me an even deeper uh, appreciation and, and love for that. So I'm thankful for that during the season. Amen. We can all definitely affirm that about our pastor. She's been a steady rock, and we're so thankful for that. Um, really thankful for you. I have gained, uh, wait, and uh, we're trying to work out more, uh, but I have gained a new perspective as well that um, nothing else matters. Things have been they come down to what is essential. We've heard that on the news. What's essential? Whose job is essential? But really, what's essential for my life? And that's God, my relationship with God, and my relationship with others. And I love this quote. Mother Teresa says, if we have no peace, it is because we've forgotten that we belong to each other. And um, all of us have lived on our own the last few years um, in different states. And I just thank God every day that we're in a home together and that we're with this church body together. We're not on our own. And I'm just thankful for my relationship with God, that that's with me in isolation, in quarantine, on the road, whatever. 
but then also that we have each other. So thank you. That's good. That's good. That scripture, we'll go back to it. It says, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. So those things you're learning, as you put them into practice, you're going to gain new strength. You're going to hit new levels. You're going to level up. And then it says this, and the God of peace will be with you. And so sometimes the lessons are really hard. And sometimes they actually hit us where we're hurting the most. But as we put into practice those nudges that we're getting to turn off those news apps or whatever for a little bit of peace and then invite God of peace to come in, and it does, it's like peace like a river. It just really flows in and flows out. That's an old song. Let's sing that for a second, okay? I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Good job. We did not practice that one. You didn't know that was coming. Good job. But it just came up into my heart and my mind, and there we went. Good job. Last question for tonight, and there's so many more questions, and we all have them, and maybe there'll be another conversation where we ask some questions that maybe you have. Feel free to put some of your own questions in the comments right now as you're sitting with us, but um, this is our last question for tonight for this panel, okay? What do you hope to leave behind? As we move through this interesting season, and who knows how long this interesting season will actually last, okay? So this might be a journey, or this might be a few more steps, okay? But what do you hope to leave behind? You know, this is the question when we were talking about this last Sunday, specifically, that really stumped both of us, as God was kind of speaking to us. What do we hope to leave behind? Because it's easy sometimes to pick up something new and learn something new and to gain strength in that and to gain a better understanding and gain weight. That is incredibly easy. But to intentionally do the work in this season to leave something behind, especially when that thing that you need to leave behind is something you were doing in your normal life before this happened. But now is such a good time to take inventory of those things that you need to leave behind and ask God to give you the knowledge, the wisdom, the strength to work out of those things now so that when you move forward, you can really leave it behind. And all through scripture, we see where people received and they left behind. They moved forward when they had to leave something behind to do so. And I'm specifically thinking of the woman that was caught in adultery. And you'll find that story in John 8, John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. And you see where Jesus, um, the people or the accusers are there and they're ready to throw stones at her. And of course, Jesus silences the accusations and he silences the shame and he offers grace. And it's a beautiful moment of redemption and of grace. And it's incredible. And what Jesus does there is she gains a second chance. How cool, right? She learned of Jesus's grace. She gains a second chance. And then he says this, now go and leave your life of sin. Leave something behind. You're learning. You're gaining. Now leave behind what kept you captive. And so what is something that you hope to leave behind? You may not have been working on that this whole time, so start tonight. Start tonight. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's a hang-up. Maybe it's an attitude problem. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's it's a thought process. I don't know, maybe biting your fingernails. It might be as simple as that. It's okay, that's for my son Dallas, all right? (laughs) On the other side of the camera. But what are you hoping to leave behind as we move through this season and as we learn of God and as we gain deeper understandings of him and of ourselves, what do we need to leave behind? 
So we're all going to answer this question tonight, and we're going to take turns, and we're going to start with Tina again. I am believing that I'm going to leave this season, and I'm going to leave the idea that my mind, in my in my own mind, that I have a poverty mindset. So to explain that, um, I for whatever reason I've struggled to believe that that God is truly my shepherd and that I have all that I need. So in this season, I'm leaving behind a poverty mindset and I'm believing the truth that my God will supply my every need because he has and he will in the future too. So um, Psalm 84, 11 is one of my favorite verses that says the Lord your God is your son and your shield. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those whose walk is blameless. So I'm leaving behind that poverty mindset that tells me that fear-based thinking that I'm not going to have enough or God is withholding from me or they have, I don't, the comparison game. I'm leaving that behind and I'm stepping into that truth that my, my God will supply, that he is all that I need and um, he'll do it because he has always. I think pretty much what I want to leave behind at this time of my life is uh, of the same as at any time. And uh, that is a witness of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. There's a song that came out some years ago that says, May all those who come behind us find us faithful. And when I first heard that song, I went, that's it. That's what I want. And, and we've often taught that we just want to be faithful to the end, to the very end. That's my biggest goal in life, to be faithful to. So I hope my witness, I hope my witness speaks loudly that I am faithful to the end, no matter what's going on in life, whether it's coronavirus or, you know, or great success, whatever. Uh, but I want to be faithful. I also want to know that uh, people know I love the church. I don't say I can love the Lord and not love his church. And there's a verse in Philemon. It's uh, Paul's letter. He's writing to Philemon. It's just one chapter long. But in verse 7, I love this verse, and I, and I believe it really, that's what I want in my witness. And Paul is saying, your love has given me much joy and comfort, my brother, for your kindness has often refreshed the hearts of God's people. I want to be that kind of person that I encourage God's people along the way in my witness. I know for me, um, and maybe some of you have felt the same way, but being stuck at home, I get in this stuck mentality um, that um, I'm stuck at home, can't go anywhere, can't do anything, life's kind of just on pause, um, but it has really seeped into my spiritual life and my faith with the Lord in the sense that I feel stuck in fear or I feel stuck in worry, and there's no forward motion, there's no growth, and so... That's something that God has really been working in my heart um, through this season is that I'm leaving behind the stuckness, the stuckness, and I'm choosing to move forward with him and choosing to believe that he has a forward motion in my life, that I'm not just stuck in my fear, I'm not just stuck in my worry, I'm not just stuck in my literal house, but there's more ahead, there's more that he has in his will and in his faithfulness and goodness, and so... That's really what I'm hoping to leave behind. I'm doing the work to leave behind is I'm done with feeling stuck, not doing it anymore. Yeah. You know, we did talk about how this was probably the most difficult question, um, at least is for me, but maybe one of the most, maybe the most important question, I don't know. But I really do want to encourage all of us to consider what the Lord might be doing in our lives and our hearts in our circumstances and really asking us, just like he did the woman caught in adultery, to, to leave that uh, behind. And uh, what came to my mind, to my heart, is something that I and it have been on a journey to leave behind for a while, but in the season it's even more so, and it really is um, not knowing. Um, several years ago I was on a ministry trip and the winds of change were happening in our lives. And the Lord impressed upon me, he said, Eric, you're going to have to let go of everything you've ever known. Um, and I was like, are you kidding me? Because <laughs> normally you're like, um, you want to build on everything you ever knew. You want to climb the corporate ladder or whatever. 
you want to continue to take those steps and, and grow in that. He wasn't saying you're going to have to forget everything you've grown in or, or learned or experiences that you had or anything like that. But one of the things that he was saying to me was, you really are going to have to let go of the way that you have done it um, or the way you do it or think it should be done or something like that. Or he really was saying, you know what, you're going to be going through seasons of life where it is so different and it's not anything like you've ever seen or experienced before. And that's something that's been really difficult for me over the last, it's really been a five year journey. Um, because I like to know, and there's sometimes I need to know and I will know and I, we do the research and we do the checklist and all that kind of stuff and we figure out you know, how much this is gonna cost or whatever. We do that in life and there's reason for that and God I think love stewardship like that and whatnot when it's trusting him. But for me, it's been a journey of trust and letting go of needing to know things that I am not going to know what the next step is or how that's actually going to end up. And so in this season, it's been an even deeper thing with that, like not knowing, because truly, just like you said, things change in an afternoon and then they just continue to change. And finally, I'm like, oh, I don't know what it's going to be different tomorrow and none of us did and um, so for me I want to let go of I want to leave behind in, in an even deeper way that not knowing in the sense of trusting God for what's next in his way in his will and the Lord brought me to this scripture in James and you, you know it. it says now listen you who say today or tomorrow we will go to this city or that city spend a year there Carry on business and make money. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And then this is the encouragement. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or do that. And so that's what I want to move more towards in this season of leaving things behind. So I read that scripture at the beginning of all this craziness. And um, so for me, there's two things that I want to leave behind truly. Number one, that my income does not come from my job, that it comes from God truly, um, that I can't rely on that. That's something I just can't rely on, but I can rely on God and he's my provision. And so kind of with that, like we, I trust him. Um, and then number two, the glorification of travel, going places, what's next, planning. I had a lot of trips, just like a lot of us, uh, this year that were planned that aren't going to happen, and that's okay. Uh, but just knowing I love to have fun, I love to be excited about what's coming next, and right now there's no planning happening. There's no, there's no idea of what's next. When can we go to Disney World? When can we go to um, California, Arizona, whatever, wherever we had planned? Um, there's no planning for that. And so I want to leave that behind that this day is enough. This day and this time with God is all I need. And that he will provide everything I need in the now, in this moment. And I'm really, really thankful for that. There's a lot of other things I'm going to leave behind, but those are my main ones. And I'm so thankful for that perspective in this time that we can leave that. Thank you, guys. So honest. Dad, I think that you, and then we're going to wrap it up. But right now, what is something you want to leave behind? Be thinking and pondering as Dad answers. and Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Well, I always wanted to leave millions of dollars to one of my favorite <laughs> school, Mac U, Mid-America Christian University. I, I dreamed about it. I prayed about it. And, and I, I really wanted to do that. Now I'm 75 years old and I don't have that kind of money, so I'm going to have to change my thoughts of what I'm going to leave behind. I, I have so much respect for the Kardatskis who built the Kardatsky Wellness Center in Anderson University and Daryl Darby uh, a building in Lake, in Lake Wales. And, um, there's so many people that have dedicated their finances to Mac U, Mid America Christian University, and uh, I'm thankful for them. But what am I going to leave behind? My wife almost told my testimony in together was, "May all who come behind me find me faithful." 
as they sift through all the pages of my past, I hope that they will look at them and, and say, Larry was faithful to the very end. It has been a blessing and a privilege of mine to be able to win people to the Lord as we pastored and as we visited in hospitals and nursing homes and in people's homes. And it would be thrilling to me if on the very day that I pass on to be with Jesus, that I had the opportunity to lead someone to the Lord. I would love to leave that legacy uh, to the church and to the Lord. May God bless. Yeah, so this question can take you one of two directions. What do I want to leave behind? Like I mentioned in the former um, moments, maybe it's something that has been toxic in you and something you, that it has been a detriment to you, to your mind, to your mental health. And so you want to leave that behind. But maybe something you want to leave behind is something that you actually want to last. And so that's where I'm headed to. I want to leave behind the aroma of Christ. I don't know if anyone will smell it because they'll have a mask on. However, <laughs> but here's the deal. As things continue to change, it's not going to look the way you want it to. Whatever side you fall on. We make this side what you would call people that are ready to get back to normal and this side that are scared to death of normal. Whatever happens, someone's going to be concerned. I want to walk through Publix going the proper direction. <laughs> or driving through a drive through Or going about my essential business with a faith that leaves an aroma of Christ behind. Not another question, not another concern. And so if that means I'm wearing my mask and my gloves because it protects others around me and, and that's the aroma of Christ people need, then I'm, I'm it. If it means, you know, whatever it looks like. And I'm going to tell you, I, I'm trying to get my cues really hardcore from God. And the Holy Spirit gives us his wisdom. Like you mentioned, Tina. But I want to leave the aroma of Christ. And I think that we can do that when we have set our mind on things above and on the, not on the things of earth. The things of earth right now really super matter. But when we set our mind on things above, he gives us wisdom, he gives us knowledge, he sends us forth to be the aroma of Christ. I love this story that um, one of our people, Allie Deans, posted yesterday on Facebook that they were um, out doing essential business at the store, whatever, and they were leaving and someone was having car trouble. And the woman was distraught and the man was dripping with sweat. And um, they knew they needed to help, but now we're going to approach people and offer to help. And when I come up to help him move his car, I'm not going to be six feet apart. And she explains that in her Facebook post. And she approaches him and says, you know, we're clean, we're we were not, you know, we were very symptomatic, and, and he welcomed the help, and they were able to help him, and he was so thankful for the help. I'm going to say, Barney and Allie, Harper, Evan, and Paige, you left the aroma of Christ. You did it well. You are living faith, not fear. Good job. And that's what I want to do. I want to leave the aroma of Christ, and in each situation, we'll get the wisdom we need to handle it. Sometimes we're going to need to walk away. And sometimes we're going to need to jump in and say, we're clean. Can we help? But I want to leave the arm of Christ. And I think that we can do that best when we set our things online, our minds on things above. Here's something that we know. He holds the future in the palm of his hand. And he has never failed me yet. I know he is reigning and still have control. So why should I worry? Fret. As we end our time together tonight, we want to sing this really fun song. You get two childhood songs tonight. You got the joy of the Lord is my strength, and you're going to get this really fun song titled I Believe. I taught it to everyone before we started. I sang this as a child going from camp meeting to camp meeting with my parents, 
And uh, it was really fun. My brother, my sister, myself, my parents, we sang this song. We're going to sing it for you, and you're going to learn it because it's so easy. And it has a verse and a chorus, and you'll hear it, and we'll have you join us at the end. But here, let me say this again. He holds the future in the palm of his hand, and he has never failed me yet. I know he is reigning and still has control. So why should I worry or fret? You guys want to sing it, I believe? All right, let's sing it. I believe. that you're able to answer these questions, and that maybe you too might leave behind something toxic, but in so doing, you're going to end up leaving behind the aroma of Christ. We love you, church. Eric's going to pray, and then we're going to sign off and go back to face him. So let's pray. Father, we just want to, again tonight, give you all the praise and the glory. Thank you for this conversation that we've been able to have, and we know that you have led it, and we pray that as we all kind of look at those questions of, what are we learning? What have we gained? What do we hope to leave behind? Lord, that your word would be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. And that surely your goodness and your mercy we know will follow us all the days of our lives. And God, we know that when we are tempted to worry or fret, we can turn that back into faith and say, no, actually the truth is I believe. Yeah. And uh, what I believe is, God, you're in control and your will is perfect. And you have a plan for this day, and we ask you, God, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, we love you, and God, we thank you for the opportunity to even be in a conversation like this with the church. Thank you, Lord, for Church of God, Sarasota. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, to continue to encourage every single person that is a part of your church here and all over the place. That we would be the kind of people that really would, like Marcia said, leave the aroma of Christ amen. behind. Lord, we love you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Church, we really do want you to know that we miss you. And we, uh, we can't wait till we're all back together again. And we really do uh, look forward to that day. We hope you've been encouraged tonight. And that you'll take some time to think through those questions or have some conversation with God, with yourself and family. And we just want to let you know, truly, we love you, church. Amen. Have a great night.